Well, welcome to the next instalment of our journey with the Reverend John James Taylor to Transylvania. And if you've uh, been following us so far, you'll know that uh, the Reverend Mr. Taylor and his daughter have now arrived safely in Kolojvar, or Cluj, as is also known in Romanian, or Klausenberg, as he always refers to the city. So we now get some very interesting and colourful descriptions of the life of the churches and the people in Transylvania at the time. But we continue with our reading of this tale from a travel in Transylvania in 1868. The next morning, accompanied by a former pupil and a friend, we visited the Church of the Unitarians and its associated institutions. The former is a plain and spacious building with a lofty gallery at one end for the organ and choir, but wholly devoid of any pretension to architectural beauty. It was built in the years of depression and persecution to replace the more splendid edifice which had been taken from them by the Catholics. It bears on its front the simple inscription in honorum solius Dei. The gymnasium and the college adjoin the church with an inscription over the gate, Musis et Vertitubus Renovatum. The library forms a part of the same cluster of buildings. When I saw it, it was in a considerable state of confusion, being in process of removal to a larger and more convenient abode. Under the circumstances, I could not very minutely examine it. It contains, I have no doubt, some curious old Unitarian theology, though the rare books in this department are mostly in the hands of private collectors. It needs, I should say, an ampler supply of modern critical works. The pupils of the gymnasium and college with their teachers reside for the most part in the academical buildings. We saw some of their apartments, which are plain and scantily furnished, but well lighted and airy. Attached to the church is a school for girls, which was unoccupied when we visited it, but seemed well provided with the materials for effective teaching and was remarkably neat and clean. At the end of a kind of corridor is a door which opens into the chamber where the consistory holds their sittings. It is a plain room chiefly occupied by a long table of green cloth, with chairs down the sides for the members and one at the head for the bishop. It is hung round with portraits and other memorials of former bishops and benefactors, and of a few strangers, including the late Mr Taggart, who visited Clausenberg. Among the valuables preserved in the consistory is a curious manuscript written mostly in Latin, but with Magyar documents interspersed, containing a history of Transylvanian Unitarianism from its commencement. It was commenced by an Unitarian minister more than a hundred years ago and was completed in its present form by another, the great-grandfather of Mr Ozzoni, recently a student in Manchester New College. As far as I recollect, it is a very bulky quarto, closely written, but in a clear hand. I was informed by Bishop Kreitzer that a transcript is now being made of this manuscript with a translation of its Magyar contents for the purpose of transmitting the copy when finished to England. The Bishop's house is close to the college. It is simple but airy and pleasant. Indeed the Bishop, the pastor of the church and the professors and teachers of the college and gymnasium all live in the immediate vicinity of each other, so that the Hungarische Strasse, a broad and handsome street running down to one of the old gateways, forms a kind of academic locality. In the course of the morning we paid a visit to Mr Ferencz, professor of theology in the college and head pastor of the church, who enjoys a high reputation in Klausenberg outside his own denomination as a preacher. He introduced us to his wife, a simple, kind-looking, unaffected person 
who entertained us with fruit and some of the splendid grapes from their own vineyard, for which this neighbourhood is celebrated. One of his children, a fine, vigorous lad of about ten, recited to us a piece of Magyar poetry. We then adjourned to the bishop's close by for dinner. It was marked, as might be expected, by the overflowing hospitality which is everywhere characteristic of Hungary but it was further distinguished in its whole arrangement by a simple elegance and good taste, which betrayed the influence of a presiding refinement like that of Madame Kritzer, a very ladylike and agreeable person who sat at the head of the table. The wine of which Ausbruch, a sort of Tokai, formed a part, was served with a kind of aerated water, which is usually drunk with it, and forms, especially in hot weather, a very refreshing beverage. The party consisted of the professors of the college. Our common medium of intercourse was German, and this, though not the native language of anyone present, was still possessed sufficiently by all to keep up a pleasant and unbroken flow of conversation. The bishop, who is a man of wide general culture, and of considerable literary reputation, is a member of the Hungarian Academy at Pest. We did not sit long after dinner, but soon retired to the drawing room, where, as is the custom of the country, there was a mutual bowing and curtsying on all sides to mark the close of the feast. Well, we'll continue our readings tomorrow, and every so often I'll put up illustrations from my time uh, in Transylvania in 2018, in the 450th anniversary of the Edict of Torda, that is 150 years after J.J. Taylor was there. But thank you again for watching.